Yeah, good evening, um, everyone. You are welcome to tonight's um, tutorial workshop on a virtual assistant. And we are continuing from where we stopped last night. We stopped. Let me pull my my slide. We stopped yesterday at event management. So, and I believe by now. As a virtual assistant, we must have learned how to manage an event somehow. We've not done it practical, but, but from this um, from this template, we have the picture of how we can manage events. We can create a simple event management plan using a, a spreadsheet. So, so tonight we are going to look at the skills we need to operate very well or to practice very well as a virtual assistant. Looking at here, we have the following skill sets. These are the soft skills, soft skills that a virtual assistant need to possess. We have communication skills. We have time management skills. We have confidentiality and discretion. We have attention to detail. We have adaptability. We have computer skills and we have problem solving through critical thinking skills. So these are the skills, the soft skills we need to have as um, a virtual assistant. So, Let's look at communication skills. Communication is a process by which information is exchanged between individuals through a common system of symbols, sign, or behavior. It can also be the act of, can also be the act of transferring information from one person, from one place, person, or group to another. So, information is when we communicate, when we pass information from one person to another, from group to another, and is the system of uh, information sharing. And to communicate effectively, there are so many methods or so many types. Like we have verbal communications, we have non-verbal communication, we have written communication, we have listening. These are the various uh, approaches or types or, or mediums through which we can communicate um, to one another. It bridges gaps between individuals and groups through flow of information and understanding them. So, 
But there is one thing um, a lot of people misconstrue about information uh, communication, about communication of information, or about communication generally. Communication is not about uh, speaking good English or speaking using good accent. If you are speaking good English and the person you are talking to doesn't understand English, there actually there is no communication going on. So you need to understand the environment and then know the kind of information that the environment requires. I'm talking about communication generally. So you need to understand what, how, what is uh, communicated before we start looking at the way a virtual assistant can communicate. If you go to the market, you, know, you need to understand the language of the market. And that's the only way you can communicate effectively. If you go to the north, you need to understand the way they communicate and you follow, and that's the only way you can adapt very well. So these are what communication really means. When the, the, the other person is uh, passing the information and the other person is getting the information the way it's supposed to be, there's communication going on. Communication is not only verbal, we have non-verbal communication where you can use signages, you can use a uh, body language, you can body language like eye contact, you can using your head nodding, using shoulder, using your body. This is yeah, still communication. We can equally communicate through written format. Writing, using writing notes, writing on the board, writing on the paper, writing various writing approaches to communicate. So these are so many ways um, to communicate. Um, just hang on a bit. Let me. I'll put, let me. Oh. Let me save this file I've been, and I'll be, I'll be with you shortly. So sorry for the interruption. I was um, I just finished a class and I needed to save the transcript. So recording in progress. So we have um, a written communication. All of us know what written communication, writing, and when you are writing, you need to be um legible so the person that you are sending your write-ups need to understand you must have good handwriting if you are if you are writing more if you are typing then and must make sure that uh, the, 
you use the correct language to type whatever so that the person you are passing information will actually understand the content of what you've written another way of communicating way of communicating effectively is a true is a true place hmm. So, um, so I said about listening communication. The another way to communicate very well is through listening. So listening is part of communication. So when somebody is talking, you need to listen very well in order to do what the person is saying. So a good listener is a good communicator because some people don't have this uh, uh, listening skills and that makes them to be a very bad communication communicator more especially if you are facilitating a workshop when your respondents are talking you need to allow them to finish what they want to say or to make their inputs you don't interrupt people when they are talking. So you is a very good way of communication to listen to get what the person is saying before you you start um, uh, communicating back. So and as a virtual assistant, you need to have this communication skill. You need to be able to to listen very well. You need to be able to facilitate workshop you need to be able to um, listen very well. Like if you are a, a virtual assistant where you are meant to be a transcriber, you listening and uh, you, you have to be listening and writing. So you need to come, you have this concentration, like listening skills so that you can listen and uh, be able to transcribe very well. Then if you are, facilitating a meeting because as a virtual assistant you must be able to facilitate a meeting and be able to facilitate workshop so if you are facilitating a meeting you should be able to to communicate very well talk how and people understand what you are saying or whichever medium if you are typing you need to be able to type very well people need to understand what you are typing. And again, uh, you need to be able to understand the kind of uh, language you need to use at any point in time for you to be able to communicate very well. It's very important. And most of the time, what we use is um, English as uh, being the medium of communication for most of us. But I believe as a virtual assistant, you will not have a um, um, problem if you, if, you, if you can communicate very well. Another, another problem a lot of people are having about communication is a lack of confidence. So you must be able to have a good confidence when you are communicating for people to understand. And if you do not, understand something when we are communicating you should be able to tell the person that you do not understand or you are not getting it than trying to um presume or assume that this is what the person is saying so you must be able to 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 ask questions when you do not understand so that's a way of um, making a good communicator Then the next skill 
that a virtual assistant need to have is time management. You need to have a good time management. This is the ability to manage one's time effectively and efficiently in order to achieve desired results. Proper time management helps an individual to allocate his or her time properly and accomplish tasks effectively. Some important skills related to successful time management include organization and prioritization. So how do we manage our time? Some people always complain, I don't have time, I don't have time. But some people never complain, they, they, they do, they achieve whatever they want to achieve within the 24 hours everybody have. But some people always complaining, if you, all the time, I don't have time. But the issue it doesn't lie that the person doesn't have time. The issue there lies that the person doesn't have good time management. So you plan your time very well. If you are the one that um, forgets a lot, uh, then you prioritize your, your, your tasks. So this is why we use a, a lot of project management softwares. We use them to, to manage our time. We use them to organize ourselves. So when you are doing time management, you must know how to organize. Organization means planning. You look at all your tasks and activities. Then you write them down. When you write your tasks down, you prioritize them in the order of uh, a priority. How important is goals? The most important comes first, and the least important comes last. And then you allocate time to every task. Every of your tasks must have a time frame. And then there is need to some of these, you automate some of these um, activities to have reminders. You set alerts, that is, when I mean automation, you set alerts within all your time, or within all your activities, to be having a, a notification, a pop notification or reminder or triggers that will remind you about your activities. So we use a lot of uh, tools like um, calendar to, to pl plan our time. We use a time doctor to plan our time. So these are some of the software we are going to be looking into. Some of the tools we use for time management. I will have a calendar time doctor. We call it have a, we use project management platforms like Basecamp, these are project trackers. We use it, when you're talking about tracking, we monitor time and we monitor budget. Time helps us to monitor because when you are out of time, you start losing money, a lot of things start clashing. It's a very important quality of a project manager, ability, to deliver an activity within a time period of time, within a time frame. So if, if you know how to do that very well, then you are a good project manager and you are a good uh, administrator. Because virtual assistant is an administrator. is a virtual administrative assistant. You are, you are an administrator, you know how to manage 
activities, administer activities, manage them very well. So these are how we, we do prioritization. Let's do a bit of um, um, practical on this because it's very important aspect of uh, what we are doing. Let me show how to as a Okay. It's not the project I want to share. Okay, let's use, use uh, this particular activity. Now see, this is a uh, to do what we are meant to do. And this is the list of activities, although this is a uh, We've uh, exhausted all our all our activities here. That's why I want to use the one. Okay. Let's use this particular activity. So under this uh, defined stage, this is what we are meant to achieve. But we need to plan this, we need to prioritize this so that we don't make mistake. And to prioritize it, here you see, create use case diagram, create wireframe, create test cases, test plan and scenario, and the commence red meeting. So this is activities we are meant to um, achieve within this stage of this project. But we need to understand which one comes first. So that's how we prioritize it. So under prioritization, we see that, okay, for instance, If we start doing this, we are going to get confused in this. If we start creating test cases at this point, then we are going to get confused within this project because it's not supposed to be the number one, and this is supposed to uh, be sequential. So we look at which one that comes first, and then we say this, Create wireframe should be the first one. Then we bring it here. I'll create a um, use case diagram. We bring it here. Then, so as we are bringing it, doing it this way, we are prioritizing them. This is called prioritization. That's how we prioritize it. And in order to prioritize, we need to, in, in business analysis and project, well, there's what we call Moscow analysis. Although this is a bit 
out of this scope. It's a result of scope of this particular course. So let us not dive in there because it's going to drag us. So, but this is how simple prioritization of uh, this thing to know which one to do first. And then when planning, for instance here, when you are planning everything, you need to manage your time. You just, you need to allocate time. For instance, in order to manage this time, you need to put a time within this particular deliverable. Let's say, I'm signing this to a team member. First, I'm assigning this to a Krisa. And in order to manage the time, when do you notify me, Charles? So the time aspect of it is due time here. This is where what I'm trying to achieve here. You need to be specific. Um, what I'm doing here is time management. I'm just using this project, I'm doing my time management. I specify the time. When is this going to be due? So this should be due on Friday. So when this project, when this particular activity, for instance, on Thursday, on Saturday, which is on ninth, and uh, this guy, Krisa, have not submitted this particular activity, this will trigger off. This run to run for multiple days. This will trigger off. It will notify me that Chris have not submitted this. And it becomes a project uh, risk within this hour, whatever we are doing, even as a virtual assistant, you find out that you'll be working in a situation like this as a project support. What you'll be doing is to make sure that if this is due, on Friday 8th. On Friday 4th, you might send a, a reminder to Chris about this. Or on that Friday, you might call remind Chris that you have not so I have not gotten your delivery. So it's your duty, most of the time, the project of support to make sure that these guys you are working with here, they deliver their deliverable on due time. They don't um, run this project that, uh, down by going outside the time frame for each activity. So it's part of time management. That's how we can use base camp to manage time here. So that is the, 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 the logic or what I'm trying to let us understand within this context. So that's how we can use this software, Basecamp, in time management. So with this, we'll find out that we'll always be working within time because we'll always be getting a push notification that we are running um, against our plan. So that is it. So another, another way we can actually I see two people raising hand. Wait, I will come just write your question down. I will come so you can uh, ask your questions. Another way we can manage time is um, using this uh, calendar. So when we have a deliverable that needs to be submitted and is not submitted, okay. For instance, now let's let me show us something. 
this is our calendar. You can see this, our calendar here, our schedule. Now see, because all these things are automated within this calendar, now you can see there are no event on the schedule, but you can see, but you have got one overdue to do. So it's now showing me, see, <coughs> I've gotten the notification, but it's now showing, if I want to do anything with this calendar, it's just showing me that I have something I have not done here. And it's not good for this point. That's why it's high, highlighted. So if you come here, you see today is fifth, but I'm still getting two dots here. Meaning that on fourth, I'm supposed to receive a deliverable here, which is it. And I click now. I see two dots, two deliverable. I can see now that this guy, I've got two deliverable here. He's supposed to submit this deliverable. Hello, sir. Sorry to interrupt you. We can't see your screen, sir. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Hmm. Okay. So when do you stop seeing my screen? Is it uh, the whole base camp? Yes, sir. Okay. But do you see the, the time management within the slide? Yes, sir. Um, Okay. Okay. I will go. I'll start afresh with base camp. Okay. Okay. Let me start sharing now. See. Can you see it now? Yes, sir. Okay. Why in um, Project Catroid, you can see it. Okay. So what we are talking is uh, how can we use software to manage time? How can we use software in time management? Because as a virtual assistant, you, you can now see that one of your key skills is, is to have a good time management. Good time management is not just um, going to uh, church on time or, or coming to meeting on time. It's gone beyond that is about how to manage your activities with software, how you can use, use the relevant software to manage your time within your project or within the work we are doing. Now we have this team here. And let's say you are working as a virtual assistant within this project team, which is as a project support officer. So how do you manage, how do you apply time management? You come to this, this is the project um, deliverables and activities. Now you need to understand the sequence of all these um, activities. 
the sequence, it means that you need to understand the relationships within these activities. So that is how you prior, you, the, 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 the prioritization comes in. When you are planning, you prioritize. So which one comes first? You are prioritizing. This is just planning. We're not talking about time yet. We're talking about how to plan this. So this uh, business case comes last. So there is no way you can do business case without first documenting existing requirements, conducting requirement analysis, documenting future processes, validating. So this one should actually come last. But if you don't know how to plan, if you bring this up, then you become confusion here. If you are the one planning this project, there, there will be a confusion here because they won't have enough material. They won't have enough information to be able to write their business case. So you must know how to prioritize which one comes first. So this is what it's all about. So you, you arrange them based on which one comes first. And that is a uh, prioritization and plan, plan and prioritization, organizing. So when you arrange it based on their dependencies, and in the order of priority, that is prioritization. And it doesn't end there alone. You need to manage these things within time. So for instance, these particular activities, see select project approach or, or this uh, facilitate requirement gathering. So you look at this, I assign this to all these people, but this is the due date. This deliverable should be due on Friday. On Friday, they should be able to submit all their reports, all their deliverable on Friday. But if on Friday, any of them fail to submit this report, I will receive a trigger that somebody is delaying this project. That somebody is supposed to be submitted but has not submitted. So I will get a notification. So now this is how I'm using this um, software to do my time management. This is optional, it's not automatic. For instance, now let me say document existing requirement. After doing this, I can just decide not to put the due date. But if I don't put the due date, this will take up to even three years to be completed and doesn't make sense. So what of if any of them refuses to, to do his or her work? So he's going to tie my project down because I'm not managing this project very well. I'm not, the, there is no due date. I didn't put the time they are mean to submit this. So this is how you can use this to manage a project become a good time manager while you are managing a project or when you are becoming a, a project support. Because in some cases, you find out that it's going to be the duty of the project support officer to be monitoring, making sure that the project team members are doing their job. They are, they are submitting their report on due date. So it might be a duty as a virtual assistant to be collecting their reports and then documenting. So making sure that if the, the, the report is meant to be ready by Friday, 
you need to chase them around to collect the report. And the only way to do that is make sure that there is time, a time frame for all these things. So when any of them is missing their time, you remind the person. This will even remind you or remind the person that they are missing their time. So that's how you can use a software like this to manage time. Coming here at the schedule, schedule is the calendar. You can see. So today is fifth. But let's see, we we'll have one issue here. You can see this dot. You see? You can see that some people have not really submitted their reports. So that's why I'm seeing these dots here. So this to this date, today is fifth, but they are still outstanding deliverables. And this is the only way I can use this to monitor this. So, and these are the ones that are coming up tomorrow. And these are the ones coming up on Friday. But we have backlog. The backlog we have, these are the backlogs. And some people have not submitted their reports. So this is how you can use calendar. This is a calendar. When you talk about schedule here in base camp, we're talking about calendar. So I'm just using this particular one. There are so many ways you can manage time based on what you are doing. But in this particular project management, for a project support officer, this is how you can automate your activities to be getting triggers when somebody is, uh, is trying to um, try not to be uh, to drag the project down. So you get you know those people that are dragging the project down. And then you follow them up and or prompt them to do what they are supposed to be doing. So these are one of the, the ways in time management. I decided to take some time to look because when you say time management, some people might not understand time management. It's not just waking up early or going to meet, it's, it's gone beyond that. <clears throat> Can you see my 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 slide? Yes, sir. Okay, so in time management, we have other tools, um, but we are going to come to that later. We don't have time to start. We might not do that one when we come to tools. This is called the time doctor. So what we are going to come to this, we'll see how to use time doctor. So that's all for time management for now. We we'll expand more on time management when it comes to tools. Then we'll look at how to use time doctor. So the next thing is um, confidentiality and discretion. 
this is a quality of being able to respect someone's privacy and abstain from sharing personal or sensitive information about an individual or client, especially if that information has been shared in confidence. So, as a virtual assistant, you are going to be handling a lot of sensitive information. It's a lot of sensitive documents. We are going to be working as a PA. So, and in this regard, you must be able to respect privacies. You don't talk about people's privacy. What you see at work remain at work. You don't go home, they start discussing your, your boss, personal information, which you're disclosing it with your wife or your husband or your girlfriend or your boyfriend. You don't do that. So, for instance, your boss will share his or her credit card details. You don't go and start telling your boyfriend, this is the credit card detail of my boss or my company. You know, what if your boyfriend is a Yahoo boy and uh, hack into the company details? So that's why you don't do that. You might, your boyfriend might do that without your knowledge and hack and start causing havoc to your company. So you must respect somebody's privacy. You don't share all these details, no matter what. Confidentiality as a skill is very important for a VA as well might be required to handle sensitive data like credit card details of clients. It helps to build some level of trust between an employer and the employee. So for you to end the trust and the respect, you must be able to uh, respect privacy, keep secret secret. Some of them might have a way to test you to know um, how reliable you are. I don't know about some of them, do, 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 you might just um, set you up to see if there's someone they can trust with their some sensitive documents. So it's good to, to know how to respect people's privacy and keep secret secret while you are working within this uh, job description. Because there's a lot of uh, sensitive documents um, you, you will be seen as a virtual assistant. So a virtual assistant, you must have attention to details. This is the ability of an individual to accomplish or complete a task while demonstrating thorough concern for all the areas involved. There is a um, need for a thoroughness while doing your job, not uh, doing a haphazard job. You must pay attention to details. For instance, if you are as a virtual assistant and you are mean to, to respond to emails, you must be careful to understand the contents of that email, understand what is involved. You don't just um, respond email. You must understand what is required before you, you do respond to email. Because if you are meant to be follow, you mean to do a follow up on behalf of your clients, a follow up email then you must understand what is required. That's where this uh, attention to details comes in. 
you might send uh, a follow-up uh, uh, re response or reply that can cause a, a serious havoc to your organization. So that's why there is, there is need for you to have this attention to detail. So this requires one to monitor and check work or inform or informs while organization organizing time and the resource effectively. So if, if there is need for one to look at your work for thoroughness, there is need, to, then you have to do that. So some of the things you need to do, you need to be validated. So if you are doing some jobs, you need to uh, bring it to the attention of your uh, line manager for validation before moving on to the next stage of that uh, job. So these are some of the area you can um, uh, check, make, making sure that you follow the process and uh, have a good eye to detail and be uh, thoroughness while doing your job. Mainly, the only way you can do that is through um, validation of your activities. And that's why in project management, we validate everything we do. You can't send the report without validation. And there is lines of management. You must understand the line management who need to see a report and who need, uh, don't need to see a report. When I was starting my uh, career in this as a, as a BA, I, there's some mistakes. I mean, there's a report I sent to the whole project, um, stakeholders but there is not supposed to be there i should send that to my to my line manager so it's now the duty of my line manager to to know validate it and then send it to the appropriate authority if my line manager wishes or to use it to write his own report so you don't send something um you don't just send the document out. So all these are being attention to the, they need to understand the, the line of communication, the channel. That's part of being attentive. Then as a virtual um, assistant, there's need for adaptability. This means being able to rapidly learn new skills and behaviors and the environment and respond to changing circumstances, changing environment. As a virtual assistant, you'll be facing, you'll be meeting a lot of people and there is need for this because you'll be supporting your, your client in so many areas. So you must be able to adapt to changes, new environment, learn to res respond to different situations differently. You can't say that this is the way I responded to this particular customer and this is the, the, the way you be responding to all the customers. Because if you are meant to be responding to customers, you must understand a scenario surrounding a particular activity and you must respond to that in a customized way. So you must customize the way you respond to every activity or every 
individual or every customer. Customers, different customers have different complaints. So you can't respond to, you must understand the customer the way, uh, the way the customer is before you respond. For instance, here in UK, where we have a, a multi, UK is a, like, for instance, London is a multicultural city where we have Indians, we have um, uh, people from Eastern Europe, we have uh, Black people, we have uh, white people. And the way you respond to, because some people like black people, they have their way, the way they speak. If you, if you, and Indians, they have their own accent. So you must be able to adapt, you must be able to know how to handle this different set of people differently. This is a, what we call adaptability. You must be able to um, customize your tongue in order to, to respond to the customers very well. So these are some of the things like yeah, those days we used to, to work with um, when we came new here, so, so many of us were struggling to understand uh, some of the accents in the workplace. So, but we worked so hard to adapt to some of this uh, work environment. So to be able to understand what your boss is saying or what your client is saying is very difficult. And in this area, virtual assistant, you are going to be working remotely. You are going to be working with a lot of people. You find yourself working with Japanese people. You find yourself working with uh, Chinese people. You find yourself working with Indians. So you must be able to adapt to this uh, changing environment. You might find yourself in a meeting where they are, they are struggling to, to understand English. Like most Chinese people, they struggle to understand English, but they are everywhere doing businesses. And you are there representing your, your customer or your business. So you must be able to, to know how to respond to these people. So, so this, skills are ability to take different roles, responsibility well needed, ability to change communication style based on whom they are talking to. This is just what I just explained. So another one here is a critical thinking and problem solving skills. This is the ability to develop solution to remove obstacles and achieve an ultimate goal. It helps one to determine why an issue is happening and how to resolve the issues. So as a, as a virtual assistant, you should be able to solve problems. You should be able to think fast and respond to issues. And to do that, you must first identify the issue. Then you provide solution. Identifying the issue, you need to do, um, gather the requirements. I don't want us to go to, I don't want it to be like, it's more of a business analysis skill that is required here, but 
I don't want this to go into business analysis. But first, you need to identify the issue. You got a requirement. Then the profile solution to, to do to look for solution, you need to do a bit of brainstorming. Look at various solutions available. You do brainstorming, do brainstorming session with um with your team or with your colleagues or to find the solution and then implement the solution. And after implementing the solution, it doesn't end there. You need to evaluate that the solution is working. So these are the things you need to do while trying to solve a problem. And most of the time where this one comes in is as um, as a customer support. When you are working as a customer support, as a virtual assistant, this is what you are going to be doing. When a customer calls having a problem, you should be able to solve that problem for the customer. So, when we, the customer may complain, the first, the next thing, the, the first thing you have to do is to identify this issue. You need to look at those issues. If the issue is something you can do, then you solve the problem for the customer. But if it's not something you can do, then you you pass this to the the second line support, and you you follow it up. So when the second line support officer resolves the issue, then the person will get back to you with the solution and then you call back the customer with the solution. And then after solving, you need to analyze, make sure that the, that's what we call a evaluation. Make sure that the customer is happy or the issue is resolved and they are not facing such challenges. That's how you, you know how effective the solution is. And there's uh, some softwares you can use to do that, which we will look into when we we'll start looking at tools. We have a service now. It's one of the best solution, one of the best software for managing uh, incidents. So that's how you can solve problems as a virtual assistant. There are so many other ways to solve, but I'm trying to use uh, within your contents. Because if I'm looking at as, as how to solve problem as a, as a business analyst, is going to be big, but I'm trying to look how you can solve a problem as a virtual assistant. So within this context, mainly you are going to be solving as a customer support uh, personnel. So the last but not the least here is the computer skill. You must have the ability to understand and use key tools and technologies such as office productivity tools and technologies. When you talk about office productivity tools and technologies, we are talking about work spaces tools like uh, Basecamp, Asana, uh, Monday.com, Office 365. These are some of the office tools um microsoft word microsoft excel 
Lucid Chart. These are some of the tools, office-based tools. We, we can uh, try to understand how to use. And that's why I'm, I'm just always um, exposing you people, trying to expose you people to base camp. Because once you understand base camp, it's very simple to understand. You once you understand how base camp works, then it's going to be easy to understand every other office too. And we're going to look at um, we're going to look at Google Suite. This is a very good office tool. And the Google is a product all of us uses every day. But we don't understand Google, Google have, have almost everything we need. So we must understand how to use Google as well. Let me just do this one briefly before we we close for tonight. Let me just do this briefly. So can you see my Google Screen. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. So we are talking about office-based uh, tool or productivity. Now, if you, the first thing we need to understand this, on let us understand the one that is very common to us. Everybody uses Google. Google have got virtual everything we need to know or we need to work effectively as a virtual assistant or anybody can use to work even as a project manager or even as a business analyst now if you want to understand google very well it's not just about gmail this is the gmail here but google is beyond this just gmail so all of what most of us know is just Google Mail. Google Mail. Is, is we, so look, this is the Google app. All these apps here are Google. Let's look at and see what we can do with Google. See? Google here. Um, let us not even be talking about YouTube or Maps. Let's go to look at what we can use it to office tools. Now, we can use Google to, to, to have a meeting. We can use Google for our emails. We can go, use Google for, as a database to save our documents. Then we can use Google for calendar, for for tracking, for time management. We can chat here and can even save our contacts here. We can manage our photo here. Okay. But there's still more to that. This is where I'm coming to. This is Google Doc. It's like Microsoft Word. This is Google Sheet. It's like Microsoft Excel. This is Google Slide. It's like Microsoft PowerPoint. So this a whole lot you can do with Google. So. And this is um, Google Lucid Chart. This Lucid Chart is like Microsoft Visio. All these things are free. They are free. So you don't need to pay 
any money to use all these free tools. So if you understand this, you won't be even be paying money that you're trying to um, get Microsoft uh, offices in your laptop or the rest. You can use all these things. They are online based. They are online based application. They are cloud based application. You can use for free. All you need is just to have an account, have Google account, which all of us have Gmail. So as a virtual assistant, you need to understand how to use this thing very well. If you don't know, if you can't afford Microsoft um, Office 365, this is a good replacement of Office 365. So we are going to come to that when we are going to be talking about tools in um, a virtual assistant need to do their work very well. So that is all we have now then when you talk about communication in terms of computer skill terms of communication tools and technologies we are talking about tools like um, zoom which we are using now so if you know how to use zoom very well that is very good another one is uh, google we're talking about google meet and uh, Microsoft team. These are teams basically for communication and collaboration. Then we'll have a Slack. Slack is for collaboration as well. These are some of the tools we're going to look at in our next um, when we start in our next class when we'll be talking about virtual assistant tools. So we'll look at some of these tools here. To have for time management, to have time doctor, to have video conferencing, Zoom, to have communication, to have Slack. So these are some of the tools we are going to be studying critically. We need to understand how to use these tools very well. And the moment we can lay our hands on these tools, then we are then good to go and get that money from them so um going forward our our class is going to be a bit technical so the easier part of it i mean when i mean easier part is this soft case and the but this time around we're going to be looking at all these tools and this is the main thing you need to to know you need to grasp how to use these tools because companies they are employing you because you know how to use a lot of softwares that's why they are employing you you know how to use software to manage your time for them you you know how to use software to collaborate have meeting you know how to use software to communicate manage their customers and a lot of them so that's why we listed all these tools we are going to be looking at critically so by the time we're done with this you will be very ready for this uh, job so this will bring the tonight's class to an end but before we finish i would like to take your questions jemima Is Jemima there? Okay. Is your mom? Yes, sir. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't show. Up. You didn't 
um, attend the yesterday's class. I was meant to understand you are not feeling well. Yes, sir. Okay. So, and uh, Jemima is uh, joining us for the first time. So you make sure you you watch the the videos for the classes with uh, the one you missed. So I I don't think. I don't think you, you've got any questions for now. Two years, you are like, we are trying to ask you to tell what you think. Juliet is like, Juliet is trying to ask a question, but I don't know what's going on. Do you want to ask, do you want to ask any question? No, oh, for now. Okay. Okay, good night. Um,